Hey everybody, Captain V here. Um, shoot a little bit of a Guggen video here about some maintenance on your boat. Uh, today I'm going to replace a uh, poppet valve uh, assembly. Um, I buy it completely, uh, the assembly. You go buy it in parts, but uh, that means you got to put things together again. And uh, uh, I prefer it just to get the assembly. So this is what the whole poppet valve looks like. I'm going to take it out of the bag in a second. Also, Sometimes they don't come with this gasket, and you're going to need the gasket. And that's about it. We're going to put that popper valve on a Verado Mercury 250. It's a 2015 250 Mercury Verado. It's right here. Uh, what we're going to do, the popper valve is on your port side uh, under the chap. So there's six screws for this uh, chap to come off. I'm going to pop that off, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, we got the chap off on the port side, and this egg shape here is uh, is where the uh, popper valve is going to be. But before we go there, let me just put down this um, <clears throat> chap. I don't know, it's about 50 mile per hour winds today. These are screws that uh, came out of the chap. The first thing I do when I take them off is you want to clean them up and I grease them. This way I don't forget about greasing them a little bit later on. I'd recommend, I think almost almost any marine mechanic is going to recommend that you grease every single screw that comes out of your motor that you got to put back in. Um, because it might be just a year, two years, uh, and the worst headache in the world is for one of these babies to get jammed in there and you, you break off the head or something like that. So I'm going to clean these up, grease them up a little bit, and I'll be right back. So I cleaned up these screws. Um, these bolts here. Um, I put a little grease on them. The other thing you want to do is just check them, see if there's any uh, any signs of them stripping or anything like that. If there is, now is a good time to chuck it and get it ready. Uh, put a new one in there. Uh, but these look pretty good. They got cleaned up. Now I'm going to come back to our port side, and you have this egg-shaped seal here. So I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Normally I kind of need two hands to pop this out, but we're going to try. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I get my finger in there. Uh, I'm going to need two hands here. One second. <clears throat> there we go. And there's the pop valve right there. It's the entire assembly. Uh, so it's just those two screws we got to take off. Be real careful if you don't change these every year, if you don't grease them up, you don't want to break those heads off. So you kind of maybe want to start it, you know, with a ratchet yourself by hand. Uh, and then once you kind of get a little loose to make it go faster, you could go to a drill and, you know, zap them off. And uh, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. So these are uh, 5 sixteenths. That's what we got here. Let's see if I can see that. 5 sixteenths. And what's nice is that the chap bolts as well are 516. So you're basically using, um, you know, one size. So we're just gonna see if we can loosen it off. And this came off, loosened up pretty quickly. So we're just gonna loosen that a little bit. But you can see just a little corrosion behind there. This came off pretty easy too, so it wasn't so bad. The other side I already did, and that was uh, much more uh, difficult to pop off. So I get my drill here now, so we can make it go a little faster, and we'll just take those off. And you can see how that's kind of dried in there, right? So we want to make sure we grease these up really good too. You can see how that's kind of dry in there. All right. So take these screws off and in this case here the popper valve pop right off which is beautiful it doesn't always happen that way but I just want to show you something I'm gonna come over here and show you something here <clears throat> before I replace it the um, the valve opening here could be a little dirty so I like to just put a rag in there and kind of clean it out a little bit basically everything that we do with when you work on these motors uh, again I'm not a, a professional mechanic 
Uh, I just do basic maintenance. I'm learning myself. Um, so I'm always open for suggestions. Um, I try to do the basic stuff. I'm learning because you know what? It's not the it's not the point of just knowing how to do this to save money. It's when you're you know 60, 80 miles offshore and stuff happens. You know you want to know your motors. You want to know exactly uh, you know what went wrong and how you could fix it and stuff like that. So that's more reason than not for me to get involved and play around with this a little bit and, and learn and watch some videos. And I'm hoping that this video could help someone take the anxiety out a little bit. So that kind of is a little cleaned up now from the crud. I don't want to stick any grease or anything in there. I just want to have it a little cleaned up and, and it is. I also, since I have the chapel, if I want to inspect to see if there's any issues. And as I look, I see that, you know, I got a little rub in here, right? So I want to pay attention, you know, what that, what that could have what caused that. You know, I'm going to see where the chap fits in that. See if that's an issue. And, uh, See if there's any signs of any water or salt or anything coming out here, but it all looks pretty good. Okay, so here's my uh, assembly. There's the gasket, the cover. There's my screws with a little grease on them. And uh, I'm gonna put together. One of the things that I do uh, with the assembly is I put a little grease just by those holes there. Uh, like there, just a tad. Matter of fact, I'll probably wipe a little bit off there. And the reason why I do that is that when I put the gasket on, I want it to stay in place and not move around as I try to manipulate it and get it back in that hole. So if you put a little bit of grease on there and then lay that gasket on top of there, um, you'll see it won't move as much because you're a little more uh, room to uh, manipulate it back on there. So this is what it looks like with the gasket on there. Now the gasket would normally fall off. But because I have a little bit of grease there, it holds it, you know, just like a little sticky glue a little bit there. So it holds it. So that um, is perfect. It helps me now move it uh, without it uh, moving itself. You hear that wind? It's crazy here. So what I do is I put the pop it in. I fit it back in a hole. I make sure that my bolt holes line up. And I hold it there like that. So now that's in. Now we have to put that cover over it and uh, put the first screw in. Here is the uh, pop, the new poppet valve in place. I check it to make sure that the everything is even in there. And then what I want to do is just hand tighten these. They don't gotta go crazy. I do a little bit there, and then I'll come down here and I'll. Tighten this one a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to this one a little bit. And again, doesn't have to be crazy tight, just snug fit, and I think we're good. And that's it. We're not gonna play with it any more than that. And there it is, uh pop it valve. I think they're like $28 a motor. Uh done. You know, not a big deal. We're gonna put that rubber cover on, and uh, that's how we change a uh a Ver, uh, Mercury Verado 250 uh, pop a valve. Um, you know, next season, I, I just did my thermostats. I should have showed you how to do that. Uh, the thermostats are even easier. The thermostats are literally two screws that come out and a clamp. You pop off the clamp, um, pull off the tube, you know, the hose, put the hose back on the new one, screw in the two, uh, the two bolts, and you're, you're done, you know. So uh, some of the stuff you could do yourself, and uh, you should know how to do it. I hope this helped you.